Liberia. This is Focus on Liberia on our program, FOL Marketplace. FOL Marketplace is a business and economic forum here at Focus on Liberia, where we talk about issue of business and economics, and sometimes we talk development. Welcome, welcome, folks, uh, as you can do all the time, please share the show for us. Uh, we will highly appreciate that. And what a topic that we have for you to discuss. We're talking about housing in Liberia, government and private developments. Housing is a very key uh, aspect of development in any country. And those of us that have the opportunity to live here in the United States, we know how much of a role in terms of development, in terms of generating revenue, both private and government, that housing, but here in America, mostly we say mortgage, but it's all part of the housing uh, program. And so we want to welcome you. We want you to join us in this discussion. Uh, I know many of you have been following what is happening in our country, Liberia. Uh, most of the swan communities are flooded. Our brothers and sisters who live in the community don't have places to sleep anymore. What you think is that? What kind of program you think will solve that problem? Isn't it housing? That is why we are here. My name is Ansel Nsie, and I have with me my partner, William Bernard King. Oh, William, welcome to uh, the show. How you feel? This is the marketplace. Thank you, Anthony, and thank you very much. Once again, I want to say thank you to all our viewers and those who are joining us. Uh, yeah, we're talking about housing. We're talking about housing houses. And it doesn't matter. It runs the whole gamut. You got the luxury one that maybe you see in Sinkhaw or Painesville or Mama Point. Uh, and then uh, you go all the way down to the uh, mud house. And one of the, the important thing is that when it's raining and there are elements outside, is are you protected? Do you feel safe and secure? And it doesn't matter you have a safe place to lay your head. So housing is important to uh, everyone, all of us, regardless of what income status you are in. You want to make sure you have a roof over your head. So the question is, in Mama Liberia, what are we doing? What is it looking like with our current housing situation? And so uh, that's what we'll be discussing today. It's so vast, so expensive. And uh, we're going to look at the uh, social, political, uh, social economical uh, factors and a little bit about the policies. So Anthony, and to all our viewers, we want to say thank you. Join us and share. Thank you, Werner Bernard King there. And so, folks, like Werner said, please hit that share button for us. And we're not going to waste no time to open our phone lines. We want you to join the conversation. We want you to start writing our comments right away. Let us make dating conversational. This is housing. This is something we all can relate to, no matter what part of the world that you live. But our emphasis here is on Liberia. How can we make it better? How can housing be another sector of development in our country that will improve the living standard of our people. That is why we are here and we are happy to be here and I hope you are happy to be here. But let's get started. Well, and this is what we're going to do. Let's look at the history of housing, right? Uh, from the early age or ages of the war, if you like, men are not sure how to home. And at some point, uh, human beings started experiencing something called rain and maybe the hot sun. And human beings got to know that, hey, I mean, I can't be wet, especially in areas of Africa. Sometimes we have rain falling for days. They have to be a place of shelter. And so the idea of housing is not new. It has been so paramount in the life of mankind. And so our people start building tents, and then the tire hutch, and then the mud houses, and then we gravitated to zinc and plank. And today now we have concrete and all kinds of houses that you can think about. So the idea has been that you must have a place, not only for shelter, but to rest. How comfortable can it be? So let's start with the importance of housing or shelter 
historically. William, or what do you want to share looking afar by uh, the days of the Peking man? Uh, uh, housing, shelter, uh, share with us what your thoughts are. Well, Anthony, uh, you, you've uh, covered uh, quite a bit extensively with that. Uh, you know, if I if if I wanted to take it all the way back, I would take it back to the times of kingdoms, kings and queens, fiefdoms, right. and so forth, right? Right. And uh, you know, uh, that's where you have some of those castles. Mm -hmm. uh, and and, and uh, in the African context, you have one of the oldest cities, Benin, Benin City, where you have this king. And if and I was in Benin, mm -hmm. uh, Benin City, Nigeria, and my, and my friend took me. And I could see this huge palace wall. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, looking at the history, they say at one point, uh, this was one of the biggest city with the biggest walls mm -hmm. in Africa. And you are, you are correct uh, in that it, it uh, provides shelter and also security, mm -hmm. security. And, uh, and, and um, for uh, those who wanted to uh, be kings or lords, vassals, wanted to have influence over people, one of the easiest ways that they could do that was to provide them uh, a place for security, was to provide them the uh, materials so that they, they could have uh, built. Mm -hmm. And because they were given this, this um, shelter mm -hmm. in return, uh, you know, they uh, paid different uh, uh, bartering system. They would give, you know, uh, harvest. They would give, uh, uh, you know, fruits. They would give animals. They will give a little bit of their profits they made and so forth. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's that's where this thing comes from. So housing is very important and it, it has a political component to it as well. Thank you. All right. Then, folks, uh, as you can see, we went into history a little bit. We, we just share with you. I don't know what your story might be that you want to share with us when it comes to housing. And it's not just that roof over your head, Willem said. It, it provided security, and I think it still does, no matter, uh, it maybe it depends on how you're looking at security, maybe your personal security uh, for your family. But let us come into, from day one of promoting <coughs> housing, right? And and, and let, let's start with our country, Liberia, because uh, uh, that's what we want to talk about. And so from my town, your town, your village, your parents, like I said, Edel started with a Tash house, you know, and then the mod and so forth. And then uh, development start to kick in, uh, modernization try to kick in, civilization kick in, and people started finding better ways of building homes for more security, for more comfort and shelter for their people. And, and in Liberia sometime by, uh, we, we, we started seeing some housing uh, uh, projects by our government, uh, many of you, Heard about Banave Estate, New Georgia Estate. Uh, I'm not familiar with that part of Monrovia. I live in Nigrutan. There are a few houses in Nigrutan that I have seen with my eyes from what I learned from people that met there. Uh, most of those buildings, some of those buildings uh, were built by the government. That was when the government was trying uh, to, prove, to improve housing in Liberia so that people could have comfortable places uh, for shelter. So the building houses, and individuals could move in their houses and then they'll pay back to government so that at the end of the day, when they pay off, they will have a comfortable place to live. That great shelter for they and their family. And, 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 and it, it helped a lot, so many people then. And then what happened? Did we stop that? Did we continue on that? I'm sure the argument, the, the, the point is that, yes, the housing thing, it continued even to this government. We heard about this government carrying on housing projects here and there. But how have we been doing it? Has it been successful? Are we doing more enough, you know, when it comes to our housing project? Because if you look in Morovia today, people are stranded. You know, their homes are flooded. How are we doing the whole housing thing? So, well, let, let, let me come to you. Uh, what are your thoughts on the entire housing thing in Liberia from the government angle in terms of providing a, 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 a shelter for our people? Thank you, Anthony. Um, to mention, right, so um, you're looking at just where the rubber hits the road. Yeah, and, and, uh, and before you continue, may adjustment at your back end there. Uh, your technology is, is, is a little bit out of order. Uh, make that adjustment quickly. All right. And that adjustment quickly. There you go, buddy. Oh, you got to do more. Fine. There you go. Yeah, you want to stick it. Right okay. Thank you, Anthony. Yeah. Thank you. So, so um, 
Yes. Uh, if uh, you are in a government position, mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a very quick way to maintain popularity. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a very quick way to win the hearts of the people. And uh, you go as far back where you're talking about from mat to mat actress, right? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, you go to the fact that people are migrating into the city area and they're looking at all the convenience um, uh, advanced technology has in your uh, home. So back in the uh, day. So this was a uh, tool to uh, basically uh, gain and maintain uh, uh, your voter base uh, to maintain some type of popularity. And this was a demonstration outwardly that that you could show to the people that you care about them mm -hmm. and their well-being and so when you had the gardnersville thing being built at the very foundation that's what uh, um it was for and it was a it was about to a to a to a piece and to bring people in and to show them that uh you care about them i safe people because people you know the work you got to be safe if you slip me outside in the cold or in an unhealthy environment, the mosquito biting you and, and all these different things, then you're going to miss work and you're going to have an unhealthy population. So it, it was big, very important and, and government not enough, but definitely with the, uh, with the Barnesville building and then you had the Matadi one mm -hmm. and then there were, there were a few other ones sprinkled uh, throughout like Liberia, but not enough. Not enough. And, and uh, another component we need to look at is uh, the National Housing Authority uh, sometime uh, was established and it is that institution of government, from my understanding, uh, should be able to supervise all housing projects uh, uh, in Liberia, both from government and even private side, be just in case uh, a private individual want to go into uh, the housing sector of Liberia. But again, uh, stay on the side of the government. Uh, that that agency of government was supposed to or uh, is supposed to coordinate uh, housing projects in Liberia, in in I mean, in me at providing shelter for 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 Liberians, especially poor people who cannot afford to build uh, comfortable homes for themselves. So the right, goal right. was that government would develop these properties. You know, and decentralize them not only in Morovia but throughout the country, so that citizens who may afford a payment on a monthly basis may be able to uh, take these homes and 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 live there and be paying for them. And when the payment uh, 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 is done, then that would be for 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 that family, thereby providing them a, a, a better shelter. Uh, that was the goal, isn't it? Yeah, definitely that was the goal. You you said a lot, Anthony, and so I, I, I think I'm going to pick a small piece still with the uh, government mm -hmm. from the uh, policy side. Mm -hmm. So the uh, the National Housing Authority, I, I think uh, they received their mandate in like 1960. Okay. okay. They received their mandate in 1960, and the goal was to look at providing housing for low-income folks at a uh, very low cost and also some kind of a payment method of or a payment scheme so that people could uh, could at some point in time say, hey, this is my property. I worked so many years and I actually own it free and fair and clear and I paid. And uh, and you can see that uh, uh, that system was actually in place and was working a little bit mm -hmm. because uh, there was employment. And so the idea was to first look at the folks that had some kind of a consistent work mm -hmm. within government because government would, would pay and government had control of the payroll. Right. So every month before I gave you the money, I would take a little bit out of it, whether it was 30 bucks, 40 bucks, 50 bucks towards that uh, payment. Mm -hmm. uh, happy to say that uh, in those instances, I think during President Sir Leaf time, uh, if uh, you remember, it was in the um, news that she started uh, giving deeds and uh, giving ownership for some of those um, properties that were uh, uh, there. Okay. So from the uh, policy side, that's what uh, the scheme was. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and and if in a normal, consistent environment, that may have worked. But you touched on some other stuff, but I'll let you continue the conversation and we'll see where it goes. And, 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 and Willa, in your opinion, uh, uh, on the policy side, it, it, 
can that be the, the right approach like we just uh, alluded to that, okay, the, those buildings, uh, those structures were, were developed by the government intended for mm -hmm. low income earners uh, to be able to occupy and, and, and make a monthly payment so that at some point when they are done with the payment, they can own those property. But now you said that uh, at some time, uh, the early administration uh, was giving deeds and granting ownership to individuals who have paid them off. Is that the best way to go? So, I mean, I mean, that's another way, but I'm just asking a question uh, to look at it two ways. Why these housing uh, 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 units can be designed for poor people? Let's say I have one now, maybe because I'm a secretary at a yeah. particular agency or government and I can afford maybe the 50 bucks per month. Why if mm -hmm. I, become, I become minister? All right, mm -hmm. and I can I, I'm able to build my house. Should I stay uh, a claim ownership to that house, or should not? Should it not be a program designed for only poor people? Why, if Anthony still get a bigger job, he builds a house? Why can't I move out of that building so that somebody right, right. may afford the fifty but move in, other than saying, "Oh, I mean, you pay for it; it's yours. You stay there." Well, well, to your point, right? It is always good mm -hmm. in. Uh, you know, even in a country like Liberia, where someone is a is a political um, servant, mm -hmm. uh, sorry, someone is a someone works for the government. Mm -hmm. So if you work for the for the government and you have a salary, mm -hmm. um, and I and I know the salary is uh, low, so yes, um, I want to give you the opportunity to um, purchase mm -hmm. this home because I'm looking at it as a form of wealth transfer or transferring wealth. Mm -hmm. And so um, the idea is that uh, you work hard and that every month you make payments. Now, if you do move up to the uh, minister position, mm -hmm. that is even great. That is great. Now, I have to also take into account simply that mm -hmm. when you were not a minister, mm -hmm. when you were a public servant, uh, that you were paying equity. You were paying sweat equity into that uh, home. Now, I would assume that as a minister, you may want to move. Uh, maybe you want to buy a bigger house. Mm. Well, um, the idea here is that hey, you know what? I can sell. I can I can just uh, uh, sell the um, home that I used to pay a small fee. I can sell it to the next person. Mm. Maybe the government will have a system in place so that I can I can relinquish my ownership. Mm. But on the other side, uh, uh, it would be good also if you want to keep it and you want to pay it off. Because remember, we did not give you that house or the government didn't give you that house with the thought that you would be a minister one day. Right. While you are a secretary, you are paying for it. You are paying for it small, 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 small by small. Mm -hmm. Because that's also something that is important, which is a country creating wealth right. for the citizens. So I'm creating wealth for you. Now you've moved up. Now you have one place that you could possibly rent. Mm -hmm. Now that, that, that will not impact me as a government from building a home for someone else okay. who has taken your secretary position. All right, today, uh, folks watching us here focus on Liberia. We are talking about housing in Liberia, both government and private uh, development. And 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 and, and willing a, a little more on the government side because if yeah. we look at the whole issue of housing uh, mm -hmm. in a holistic manner. It is not just putting the structure there. It is where you also put the structure. Who grants an individual or a business the right to be at a certain place? Now, let's show pictures of uh, the swarm areas in Morovia that we have on the screen right now showing to our viewers. Most of the communities are swarmy places that are either you know, purchased by individuals and they build their homes and these swamp areas to build there, to build in this place is very expensive because you might you should be able to dry these swamps before you can be able to or build a home there and, and, and for you to be able to live in there comfortably. But what we see is most of our poor brothers and sisters pay for these swamp areas. Some of them don't pay to be to, 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 to tell the truth, but they just go and build their structures there. But when the reading season descends on them, these homes get flooded. They are of forced to stay in there. And, and, and I, I, we're showing a picture right now. There's a family in their home. They're standing in the water. They put their cooking utensil on top of a piece of plank. 
I mean, this is this this is not a goal of housing. Housing is supposed to give you that shelter, that comfort. You talk about security as one of the goal of having a house. They don't have that security right now. They, 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 they are being forced to leave these homes. So the point I'm making here is that in government role of providing housing for the poor residents, I think they should be the one to say, no, this place to be here is expensive, so you can't be here. Maybe it should be government to go about drying these areas, filling these swamps in with crushed rock, sand, and whatever thing that will be able to dry it up and build that, and then be able to give the houses to the residents uh, or to live there or to citizens to live there instead of allowing these poor people you know, to, to move in these places or build in these places when they don't have the money to do so. So at the end of the day, they're doing so at their own peril. Now they don't have homes anymore because the rain is here. What do you think? Uh, Anthony, you are correct. Uh, so let's let's definitely stay here for a second. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason why is because, uh, look, the business, the FOL marketplace, uh, we really want to talk about something. And I think that we can't rush this one. So we're going to look at policies and, and look at our government for a second. Right. Okay. Um, so let's look at people. So you have a National Housing Authority. Mm -hmm. uh, we already know that 93%, 92% of our budget goes towards paying people's salary. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we know that uh, people are getting paid and uh, they're in positions to uh, work. Right. And um, and so they are expected at the very minimum to perform their work. Now, whether they have uh, money to build homes, that's another story. But as far as doing their work, we know that that they can do it. And right now, uh, um, over the year, over year, over year, we constantly see this where uh, it's so ineffective. And this is the example of the ineffectiveness of what's going on and dare I say some of the constraints that they're faced with. Right. Now, the other thing I want to say is that our National Housing Authority, if you look at it in 2018, mm -hmm. uh, we started off the year a little bit rough. So think about National Housing Authority is the new kid that walks into the schoolyard, right? right? Mm -hmm. And uh, he has good expectation, but when the teacher is teaching, he's in the back punching, throwing blows at the other student. <laughs> So uh, we started bad. We started with a scandal. There was a, there was a housing authority scandal where some of the, the folks who were in charge, they were yeah, taken to a prison and everything. I remember that very well. Yeah. Now, that was, that was 2018, okay? That was November 2018. Uh, they were acquitted around November 2019. So you can imagine for like almost a whole year, there was all this distraction. There was all this distraction. And so you have a new uh, lady um, uh, in the um, housing now. Yeah, Celia Coffey Brown. Yeah. So let me tell you where we stand with, with housing, which is going to tie into this whole water thing. Okay. okay? Mm -hmm. uh, when they came in, the National Housing Authority uh, have built 2,180 homes in the last 10 years. Okay. Now they projected that we need 512,000 units. So that means that we want to build 30,000 homes mm -hmm. every year, 30,000 homes every year. Right. And we want to renovate about 144,000 homes. So renovation. So um, they started wanting to build the 5,000 units, Roberts Foot uh, Highway. Right. And they said, we're going to start small. We can only do maybe 61,000 units in like five years. Mm -hmm. So the whole question is, well, where are you going to get the money from to build these homes? Where are you going to get it from? And also, um, what are you going to do with, within the system where uh, you get overwhelmed? So you can't go to these communities in dry season, right? Mm -hmm. Tell them you need to move because this is a flood area. Right. Or you can't go anywhere and say, okay, hey, you know what? I'm going to build this thing so that it doesn't get swamped up. We didn't do that. And so because we didn't do that and because people did not see those things, uh, it led to the distrust of government, and time is not on our side. So uh, they are trying to build good homes, uh, but they're severely challenged. 
and because there's no allocation of appropriate money towards that. And that's a huge problem. That's not um, um, acceptable. And you may say, well, if housing is the popular vote, that's going to get me the popular vote. Well, what's going on? Well, in Liberia, we think reverse. So right now, um, to get your votes, you just need to give people rice. You see? So, so, so now you reduce it down. You water it down now to where now I just need to give people rice. I don't need to worry about giving them too much shelter. And 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 well, I, I'm glad you 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 just pointed this out. Um, very recently, I think day before yesterday, I ran into a video of Honor Royeke Koluba. He is one of the representatives that I believe is in District 10 in Monserrado County. <laughs> And he's he built this pathway bridge within one of these swamp communities. And the goal is that so that the residents of that community can be able to travel on that bridge from one point to another in that swamp. Mm -hmm. And I was looking at it, I'm like, okay, is, is this the, the best solution that national government can come up with? Is this the best solution uh, a representative of the people can come up with. Like what you were saying, th this is a man making an intervention without looking at or asking what is the best solution. So with that pathway bridge, homes, I mean, the, the water will stay into people's homes. So it, it does not solve the problem. What it does is it celebrates this man for a very short time. And then people say, okay, at least we have a bridge. So if I'm coming from the hustle, I will travel on a bridge that may be dry because it's elevated. But when I enter my home, I have water in my home. I don't have a place to sleep. So what's about saying, uh, honorable representative, can you advocate that money be put into the budget to dry all the swamp communities in Morovia. You represent Morovia. Can you advocate for that? Can you say like, okay, I will get a video. I will get pictures of my constituents because this thing happened year after year. Mm -hmm. Going through this challenge and go into plenary, show the video, show the pictures and tell my colleagues, this is what people in Morovia are dealing with. The capital city is right here. The people who are right before our noses here, down Clara Town, do community, they can't sleep in their homes right now. Can we, for Christ's sake, pass a budget to dry that entire swamp area so that these people can be able to at least sleep in their homes? Can we do that for Christ's sake? But, right, right. You know, so go ahead. Well, well, you know, um, you asked that question and... Um, you know, uh, what uh, we've done is that we said, okay, the National Housing Authority uh, go out. Uh, you know, uh, President we has some uh, contacts, Guinea, Guinea-Bissau, all over the uh, places, mm -hmm. and see if we can bring in some investors who would like to uh, build these uh, low-income housing, okay? Right. They want to build some. And see if uh, by them building these low-income housing, we can put some people inside and uh, we can pay this guy back. Um, I see there's a, there, there's a lot of things that, that can go wrong with that, which is what happened. Um, you know, there was accusation of bribery and different things like that because we're putting people in positions to execute something that is huge and they have no experience. They have zero experience in there and so they become overwhelmed. Now, I can uh, tell you this, um, you know, uh, my family home is in, is in Sinkor, okay. okay? It's in Sinkor, it's, it's on one of the best streets in Sinkor. And uh, when my father was building the house, he made sure it was built on three-foot stilts, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, three-foot stilts is very expensive. So, but what that means is that during the rainy season, uh, the water will have to rise at least 36 inches before it gets to hit the concrete right. foundation at the at the um, you know at the floor, and um, a lot of the um, houses that we need to be built 
needs to be built with that in mind. Uh, but the, the um, and I, I hate saying this, but there's no, um, even if you were working, um, you know, you had your own marketplace or you had your own stall or you had some, some something small, um, you still have to spend about 20, 25,000, 30,000 to build a good, decent house. And uh, that's what the National Housing Authority is attempting to um, do, but they're not doing it quick enough, fast enough, and there needs to be private players that can come into this place and do it. But the biggest heartache, and saying the biggest heartache, is that we have land, we have land issues. So when you talk about housing, you're talking about land issues. So you have, um, there are a lot of places that have been developed because of the war, people move into the city. And we can argue that for another day, but the idea here is that there's land that is not government-owned land. You have people occupying private land, and these things are in court. And hence, if something is in court, you cannot develop or build the right way on these lands. Mm -hmm. So people put up little zinc houses, zinc taxes, and everything because they need to survive day to day. And so when the rain comes, they're stuck with dealing with that. So it's a, uh, it's it's a, uh, you know, that's one of the um, the reasons that you see this. There is some land that should not be built on, to your point, and it costs very, it's very expensive to to fill a swamp. Okay, and um, there's been challenges with that. People build, they don't hire the right people to build because they cannot afford it. It's easy for me to mix concrete. It's easy for me to say, okay, I will put bricks. I seen a guy do it. I put bricks, bricks, and I have a house here. But to hire the architect and different things like that is very challenging, very difficult, and we don't have that infrastructure. So that's something that that is that is needed. We have something that is really needed. So housing challenges in Liberia uh, is very strong. Oh yeah, I see you have the. Uh, so, so Willem, as you can see, this is yeah. uh, Honorable Yeka Koluba. Yeah. Uh, this is all right. So he built the path bridge uh, mm -hmm. in this swamp area. You can see the surrounding. This is complete swampy area. All right. And 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 what, I mean, somebody will say this is of hell, but how much hell it is with this bridge still? That house you're looking at there, when the whole place gets flooded with, with rainwater. That home, the person who owns that home will not be able to sleep in it. Well, well, yeah, you is, are is thinking. This, is this the best the honorable man can do in trying to have his constituents? Oh, so that path bridge is right there. But if the rain, if the rain falls for four, four or five days, that house there will be flooded with water. So that path bridge there doesn't help enough. Absolutely, it doesn't help enough. But it doesn't help enough for you uh, because you are here in the um, United States. But over there uh, in Liberia, doing something like this goes um, a very long way in a very quick time because it shows someone is uh, caring. Now, the people do know, they said, listen, this, this is a temporary fix. We understand this is a temporary fix, but please, uh, you know, go and uh, enact or pass different laws, legislations and so forth that will... Um, that would make something more permanent in these situations. Right. And um, the issue that I that, that I see is that um, I'm not sure why we are so challenged mm -hmm. um, with um, with raising the crop, the um, capital mm -hmm. to do some of these basic basic infrastructure uh, work. I, I really, it's uh, it's mind blowing and it's very perplexing to me why we're not able to do so. Uh, because when we go there, we don't, we, we hear about the humanitarian work, mm -hmm. but this humanitarian work, your pocket is not gonna be deep enough. I don't care how much salary the government gives you, 15,000 a month, 20,000 a month. You can't go around, you, the, the infrastructure work, that's going to need to effect what a good change for 2,000, 3,000, 5,000 people in a community, mm -hmm. uh, that salary is not enough. And, 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 and Willem, you know, we, we're trying to look, take a, a, a very holistic, uh, uh, we're trying to take a his, 
holistic look, sorry folks, we're trying to take a holistic look at the issue of housing, the challenges that uh, our country faces, all right, in trying to solve this problem. This is a major, I mean, we are talking about Montserrat County, we are talking about Monrovia here. Let's forget about I mean, yes. let, let's forget about I mean, River yes. Cess. All right. This is the, the 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 part of Liberia that we will all talk about. And yet, how many years? Yeah, I mean, how, how long years? now? And and the, the the National Housing Authority, I don't know whether it, it has the authority to say no, you can't build in this uh swamp area because this place is expensive to build. Uh if you build here. Uh, you will be doing it at your own peril because you don't have the money to dry this place. And then uh, why our lawmakers doing this? People that have been representing Montserrat County for years and years. So what do they advocate for for, for, for their constituents? You know, we saw Yeke there build a little bridge. How much good is it going to do if that person who is flooded anyway, mm -hmm. they walk on that little bridge and the next thing you know, that person is in a house and they can't cook. How much of a good is that? And, you know, so we, we got some pictures on the screen. This lady, I don't know what she's trying to do right there. I mean, it's like she's trying to use a bucket uh, 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 to dip that water out of that entire place. These people are, are, are stranded. And, and, and whether, I don't know. So the reason we're showing these pictures and try to show the video also for people to get the understanding of what we, 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 we're trying to, to share with you yet. How can we as a people, national government, what role can national government, because the solution to this thing would be housing. That is one of the solutions. Well, I don't know. Well, um, you, <laughs> as in, look, um, it's a basic fundamental thing. Um, you can start, right, right now they've already started. They're okay. They have some housing that they're building. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Let's just look at it, the fact that they are building houses, okay? They're trying to build. I don't care what anybody says, whether it's always oh, a one-bedroom, two-bedroom. Oh, it's not this and that. The fact that they have started at something, least yeah. on a small scale mm. doing something. Now, um, to your um, point, we need to look at this thing holistically. And so uh, one of the, the um, issues that we have is we have to get into this reality that you're going to need to provide housing for people for free. Okay, you're going to need to provide housing for people for free. Or it's going to be maybe at $5 a month that they can make a payment, $5 a month or $10 a month. Because uh, in this community, from the pictures that you show me, do you think anybody in this picture right now from the homes they have everything, do you think they can afford a $100 mortgage? No, they, they, they can't. They can't afford that. These are, right? these are people. They can't afford that, right? No, they can't. Right. So, 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 how do you go to an investor? How do you go to an investor, and you tell the investor that hey, uh, we want to provide low income housing, and these people will pay twenty, thirty dollars a month. Now, the polite investor will get on the plane, fly to Liberia. He will walk over there, assess the situation with one thing in mind only, mm -hmm. and that is, can they afford to pay the mortgage mm -hmm. if I build this house? Mm -hmm. And once he sees that it's a dire situation, mm -hmm. he's going to smile. He's going to say, I will take this on the review. Mm -hmm. I'll get back to you. And that's the good way of saying that, <laughs> that no, 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 no. So we as Liberians, uh, we have to look at this and say, okay, um, what? how can we entice the investor or a builder? I'm not saying investor, a builder, because you can't do investor, a builder. Mm -hmm. What does a builder want and how can we get them to get this work going? And it's very possible we have enough money coming in. Look, 500 and something million dollars. It's a lot of money if you know how to use it the right way, if you know how to use some of it the right way, to where you don't have to ha have problems with this with this flooding. At least everywhere you can let us know, hey, last year we had 20 regions that were flooding, people living in. This year we're only down to 17. And then the following year we're only down to 12. 
And then the following year, we're only down to like eight. So you can make progress. Uh, but uh, I'm not sure that uh, we have what it really takes. I'm sorry. From, 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 from what I've seen. Thank you, Well, and Again, folks, in cyberspace, you are watching Focus on Liberia. This is FOL Marketplace. It's a business and economic uh, forum. We also talk about development here. And today we are looking at housing in Liberia uh, from the government and the uh, private sector side. We're talking about private and government uh, development. Moravia is challenge. <laughs> I don't want to talk about accountants. All right. So how can we uh, solve this problem uh, that residents are facing right now in Monrovia uh, by using uh, the National Housing Authority to carry on the development of housing units that these residents or uh, these citizens can move in so that they can get away from the nightmare? This is a nightmare looking at, uh, you know, the, 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 the video and also looking at the pictures. It, it's a nightmare. But when I let us come to this part, right? Uh, I know we talk about the government uh, a little more. Let's come to private investment, something you started talking earlier. And you said that if a businessman walks to Liberia right now and, and looking at the huge need of, of housing uh, uh, in, in Liberia, I'd say, wow, you, you, you can. I live in Moravia. I, in Moravia, when you're looking for a room, <laughs> sometimes it takes you two to three months. It happened to me looking for a room, just a single room will take you that much time that means that you know living place is a challenge and that creates that appetite for any investor to say okay if people are looking for places to live on a daily basis then this is a market i can jump into but at the end of the day like you said is this person going to make profit is the person going well, to make profit so then yes. the private sector the private sector come in so a, a, a private sector uh, 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 start if the private sector start going into the area. Are, are, are they going to make money? Is there a purchasing power there for Liberians? Somebody well, say well, yes. Mm -hmm. Well, let me um address this straight straightforward. Mm -hmm. There's a there, there's a couple of solutions. Okay. Um, one of the solutions you can look at from the government and from the National Housing Authority mm -hmm. is that um they can do a uh, bond. Now, let me explain what a bond is. A bond is simply a loan that you say, I'm only going to pay the interest payment on it. I will make interest payment on it for 10 years. And then in the in the 10th year, I will give you back the full amount that you lent to me, right? Mm -hmm. So let's say a $10 million bond. You say, okay, $10 million bond. Uh, I, will, I will give you 10%. Uh, no, sorry, I'll give you 5%. Let me tell you what it means. On $10 million bond, that means that I'm going to pay you uh, uh, $500 million every year, uh, 500000 On a $10 million bond, I will pay you 500000 for that money. Okay? Okay, you follow the answer, and I want to be very clear. Uh, so, William, William you, you, you're confusing me. Let, let's look at it this way. No, no wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. Okay. I we can't go we can't go far. This is important. Okay. This is important. All right. Say it would cost me, say I want to build uh ten thousand homes. Mm. Okay. Or I want to build, let's say I want to build two thousand homes, five thousand homes. And I say, okay, to build a five thousand home is gonna cost me ten million dollars, right? I don't have ten million dollars, but every year I have five hundred five hundred thousand. I have five hundred thousand, okay. So what I can do, I can talk to the investor, listen, investor, come and build these 5,000 homes for me. And when you build it, I want that that uh, $10 million. I will take a loan and I'll be able to pay on it every month. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm the one that's paying on that loan and I'm paying the investor. I'm paying him for building the homes. Mm -hmm. So what, what I've essentially done is that I've, I've added more buying power to build the homes. So I can build homes. I can build 5,000 homes today, right? Mm -hmm. It costs me $10 million. I don't have to pay the $10 million cash today. I can just make every year, I can make a, pay, I can make a payment of $500,000 on a year. Every year, okay? Every year. So in 10 years or whatever it is, I would have been done paying for those 
for those homes. But that has to be something where the government is the one that's servicing. The government is the one guaranteeing my payment, okay? The government, not the, not the people that I saw in the picture because I know they cannot afford it. Now, I would not build if you tell me the person in the house will be the one that will be paying me because, because if, I, if they cannot pay and I take them to court, it will cost me $4,000 to $5,000. So, well, from what I'm understanding, uh, you, you're talking about a partnership here where, yes. for example, a private investor comes in and say, hey, I really want to invest in this housing market. Uh, but from what I see, uh, most of the citizens here don't have a job to begin with, least to talk about them be able to make timely payment. But mm -hmm. I still want to do the investment anyway. Uh, so government guarantee. So if you make that's a ten million dollar investment in Morovia to build housing units, you know, across Morovia, the government is saying, okay, this is what we're going to do. We're going to pay you the money, since you don't trust that our citizens going to do that. And we're going to mm -hmm. pay you on maybe a quarterly basis. And yes. When we should have completed that payment, maybe we take that bill, the, the management of that thing, and turn it to maybe another private entity that will be collecting the money. And then so that we government can get our money back in the long run. Is that something that you're talking about? Yes. Yes. And essentially, mm -hmm. for government, you're not really, you're, you are not worried about getting your money back mm -hmm. because your role is to provide the services for the citizens right. and your citizens have a dire need. Mm -hmm. And so you're fulfilling your obligations because these citizens pay taxes. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and so that, that is, that is one method through which you can use um, to fulfill your, your housing obligation and mobilize the private sector because you as a national housing authority, you simply do not have the bandwidth to um, take on all of these housing projects. So that is that is one way that we could stretch our money. We could stretch our money. We don't have to come up with the 10 million, just come up with every year 250, 250K. You're servicing that note and you're having people who are living in a more secure environment. And, and I, think, I think that will work because uh, even in the West, these mm -hmm. banks that build their homes that they mortgage out to uh, people, they don't want mm -hmm. their money on day one. Some, most of them, as we know, uh, 30 years. So mm -hmm. if the government can read this deal or the partnership with uh, multiple private companies, they say, hey, uh, come to our country. Uh, in each county, we want you to build. Let the uh, citizens of that county, maybe they are, through their leadership, decide when they want uh, uh, those structures to be constructed. So the company comes and 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 all the companies come and, and carry on the construction. And government is saying, hey, if you were doing it directly, you are not going to ask the people to pay down strictly. Maybe you wanted the payment to be done on uh, maybe a period of 10 years, 15 years, or 30 years. We yeah. government now will step in, all right? And then we will, we, we will be able to pay it in 10 years, 15 and 30 years period. And when the payment is done, then I mean, you said, I think that would be something that will, that will motivate a lot of company because now the government is not only uh, worrying about how they will get the materials, how they will get the manpower, where they will get the initial funding from to start, you know, the, the in infrastructure. I mean, they're not going to worry about all that but because this company has the capacity. The company has the, 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 the trained manpower. They have the, the money to do it and they just can't carry on their construction. They can decide that each unit is about maybe uh, uh, 30,000 or US dollar. We're going to build the X amount and the total is going to come to maybe uh, maybe 100 million dollars. You know, across the country, and the government can say, okay, your hundred million dollar will pay in twenty years. They divide that hundred million dollar by by twenty. This is the amount you get every year. And if you want on a monthly basis, this is the amount they divide it further. You know, by months, this is the amount you get on a on a monthly basis. I think it it, it will go a long way. It will go a long way. Maybe why government is doing that? If the government feels that they need to do more. Then they can do the little that they have started doing already and continue with that. I think that will help. Uh, 
Well, you have the ability no, to no, read comments at your end. Yeah, yeah, I do. Um, mm -hmm. uh, the gentleman said when we were showing the picture of uh, Representative uh, Mika Koloba, he said, appreciate the little he did. We should always learn how to appreciate the little things. Then he continues, Bill Rogers, many people paying $250 per month in Liberia for a two-bedroom home. Few pay $125, $150 per month for a single room. Mm -hmm. Some even pay $300 per month for, for a two-bedroom. Mm -hmm. uh, the least... The least other pay, pay is 75 per month or 50 for a single bedroom. Sometimes it's more difficult to find homes or place to rent. Mm -hmm. And then you also say, Bill Rogers, we want you to pick up the phone and call us because it seems like you have a passion for this. So please call. Yeah, call. He said, for those who can afford mm -hmm. and would definitely afford, this, that happened in every nation. If we keep saying our people cannot afford, our people will never be able to afford as they will continue uh, to be more um, our people will never be able to afford, so they will continue to be weak and lazy. We need to make them strong. Uh, so yeah, you have it, folks. That's from Bill Rogers. What I want to say, Anthony, mm -hmm. is uh, go, go do it yourself, Liam. Mm -hmm. What I want to say is, um, he is definitely correct. Mm -hmm. Um, I was talking about the very, very poor. Uh, of Liberia, uh, just like here in the U.S., they have Section 8, where some people are not able to. Uh, Anthony, something that I want to um, bring up mm -hmm. is that the National Housing Authority um, is not just for those who cannot afford at the very lowest income level. Mm -hmm. What we are speaking about, what we're saying is that there is a demand for homes at all different levels. Right. And um, you have to, you have to, on some ends, you're going to pay. And on some ends, it can be profitable. So we have over, I would just say this, we have over 100 miles of coastal line, correct? 100 miles, 100 miles. On just one mile, on a strip of one mile, one mile, uh, and you can just go maybe even a quarter mile inland. There is unbelievable how many homes you can build in there. There are some people who are well off, who can afford a forty or fifty or sixty thousand dollar two bedroom apartment or condo or townhome. The National Housing Authority can authorize the builder to do those, and they can reach out to the diaspora for us to buy some of those. And then there can be some flow of income coming in. While at the same time, on the other end, you have your citizens who are not at that level yet. They will get there, but they're not at that level yet. So you can then take some of your profits and continue to build more uh, 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 low-income, good-quality homes for these folks, right? So you as a National Housing Authority, don't limit yourself to just one, just one area. You can even just come in and you can stay in this area. If I lay down the roads and I lay down the piping and I put a nice barrier uh, for the uh, waves and everything to stop coming in for the water, I think that there are many people who would like to buy a plot of land here to build. You see? So those are some of the um, the um, the um, ideas or those are some of the things that we as Liberians and as uh, whoever um, those are some of the things that we can either bring, make awareness to our uh, government, or we can start doing ourselves if the capital is there. But to be sure, to be clear, um, look, we have to have a good marriage, okay? Government and private enterprise, private and public enterprise, they have to have a, a good marriage. And right now, uh, <laughs> you know, we, we are in the dating phase. I think. <laughs> and, 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 and Will, and that, that's it. That's another uh, opportunity there uh, for our government, uh, you know, to venture into this housing territory because Liberia is blessed to have a huge number of a population spread across the globe. And, mm -hmm. and, and almost, almost out of us across, you know, the world. Uh, especially those of us in the Western world have the ability uh, to be able to pay. I think if the government should reach a deal with any company that want to go into the housing sector to go about building homes, 
you know, if not in, in most of the counties, because what will happen is I may be able to afford $250 United States dollar on a monthly basis for my family in Liberia. I can afford that, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and you will realize that some people are doing it anyway. There are some people who are here and responsible for their brothers and sisters or sometimes their family in Liberia by paying, you know, sending them full money or uh, paying their rent. You know, I, I pay rent many months uh, 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 for, for some of my family members. I did that for not many months, but many years. And, you know, so if I can see a company that built a house, maybe a two-bedroom house and say, oh, the monthly payment is like uh, maybe $250, I can venture into that because I want my family to live in a decent place because I live in a decent place as well. That is something uh, 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 people will be able to do. So there's a huge, huge opportunity. And the other piece I want to add is that, you know, all our government, ministry, and agency are renting from individuals. So, I mean, if you look at it, if the government can contract an investor that is investing into housing to make money, they can say, they say look, uh, we want you to pay us ministry this, ministry that, ministry that. That's what you've been doing in the Western world anyway. So what, we, what, what we're going to do is that uh, they build the government contract, then they build these buildings, government agencies, and the government can be paying to them on a monthly basis or on a quarterly basis. And then when that is done, those buildings are for the government. That will be a smart way to do it. And now you don't have to worry about, oh, corruption here and there. Because if the company design the house and say, oh, to build the house is about maybe 400, I mean, uh, 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 let me knock a big number, maybe $50 million to build the agency of government up to international standard. The government can say, okay, we can afford that. So the government raises the money and give the money to the company and the company say, yeah, it's your billing. You took away the whole noise about contracting this person, buying materials and all that. That is outside of the picture. And, you know, and so... Uh, uh, in addition to the little the government is doing, we think the government need to be a little more aggressive by tapping into a uh, private investment or uh, a company that, 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 that invests into housing, and that will go a long way. And it will go you know, further in, in, in bringing about income too. We don't, don't forget about that. And, you know, as this company moves into Liberia, build these uh, uh, buildings, they will need people, they will put people to work. So the issue of uh, youth unemployment you know, uh, you'll be making some gains there, thereby allowing government to be able to generate a uh, uh, further revenue. Right. And, and, and you know, Anthony, this is where, uh, well, let me read a comment. Uh, this gentleman, remember, he was on here about commercial credit, Gabriel. Mm -hmm. So Gabriel said uh, the government already has national housing program, but that is concentrated in Monrovia. Right. If anyone is going in with a form of investment that has it has to be a joint partnership where they can subsidize it from low income standpoint. So uh, I believe um, Gabriel may have said this before I commented, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, this just goes back to what we've been saying about subsidizing um, housing. Um, Anthony, one of the, the things that, that I think holds us back, uh, and I don't want this thing to be taken lightly, but in 2018, um, this whole housing bribery thing, um, that was that, that whole housing scandal. Because uh, if you are in a fiduciary role as the government official and uh, they've given you control over 10, 20 million, 30 million dollars, uh, what ends up happening, which is very scary, is that now, of the issue of corruption. So now you're looking for an investor and you're looking at the investor saying, hey, I have a lot of money to give to you, but I, I don't want to give you all this money. So I will give you the contract, but you got to give me something small. See? So um, 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 that is uh, a situation that will hinder um, some of the things that we are, we are speaking about, okay, big time. Because if an investor comes in and he says, yeah, I have a bid, I'm coming, I want to do all these things. Mm -hmm. And you tell him, look, I don't, I, I understand that you can do it. 
I got I got twenty million dollars to give to you, but let me tell you something. You're gonna have to, have to figure out a way to give me a half a million. All right. Well, let me have a caller <laughs> on the line. Uh, let's bring this caller in uh, quickly. Uh, caller with phone number and in ninety four eighty eight. Your name and where you joining us from? Hello, caller. Yeah, yeah. This is Bill Rogers. All right, Bill, quickly. Hey, Bill, how you doing? Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm <laughs> doing pretty good. <laughs> you know, sometimes it's very complicated to comment on some topics, but some topic you are very forced to and uh, to make that comment. Let me this, my read this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very hard, but our listening is very interesting. Mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, housing business is something that can I never go to waste. Yeah. And uh, you see downtown, we live according to our measurement, right? right? You see downtown, and this will reduce the, the overpopulation place their density area in Liberia. Mm -hmm. Now everybody meant to live in the capital city. Mm -hmm. So you are saying a lot of great points, very great, interesting topic. That's why you engaged me to come up to be able to put some input and tapping because I have been in Liberia. The many my people live in Liberia, it's ten dollars living in capital city and spending ten dollars and at the end of the month you cannot pay the ten dollars. Are you are you are you serious to live in a capital city? Not mean the capital city is not be done to you. You need to dress back. You understand? Mm -hmm. So those that live downtown, I don't know which city you live in. If you live in California, you live in LAS or Redondo Beach or all depend how you want to work or how well you want to live and how you want to live with your family. If you cannot make it, what happens? You push back. You go to Toby area, you go to, um, uh, I don't know, uh, no, Mount Bagley area, or you go way behind the Dwala area to start living. That would not stop investment because a lot of young people are engaged and they are encouraged to work and they want to make an army and they don't have that, 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 that ability to stay closer to the city. You understand? Know and those that have the opportunity that stay closer to the city, I have seen some people live in Liberia in one place for over 40 years in a single bedroom because they pay $5 per, per month. That needs to be changed. That is bringing the barriers in our country. They live in the city, in the capital city right there, live right on the street, Asma Street or Rana Street or right in the capital city. Mm -hmm. They pay sometimes, they pay $10 or $15 because that was hard the whole day negotiation happen and they become passion owner of their heart now because they've been living there. That not need to happen. That means we, we need to step it up. We need to step the game up. If we want to help the government, we want to help the people, we need to reshuffle everything. And those that cannot pay, they give the working people the chance to work and have the upper time to be able to go to work on time and be able to make more money for the country and build the economies as well. That's what I'm saying. You see that? I, the minimum people paying Liberia is $10, $15, $20, and uh, people. And people that have that money that are working every day, right. they spend all that money on transportation. That is not fair. Yeah. Bill, uh, so, something yeah. uh, I want to throw out there. Um, um, do you know that if you want to evict somebody in Liberia, uh, the minimum cost is at least $1,000? No, he's not going to try to say you are invading the person. No, no, no. I'm saying, I'm saying what I'm what what I'm saying is that the cost benefit analysis, somebody paying you ten dollar rent every month, uh, and all of a sudden they cannot pay, then uh maybe if you have to mm -hmm. take them to court to evict them, do you know that is about a thousand dollars? That's not bringing the problem. That's why our housing authority is not stronger to make rules and suggestion and modify the, 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 the stuff that will help reduce burden for the landlord and stuff. That's what people capitalize on. That's what I'm saying. And so we need to modify all this stuff to give the people the opportunity. And we, we, because of that, the landlord is not willing to upgrade the building. The thing can be leaking for any tools, anywhere. They will stay there because the landlord is not, they don't bother with that because that's their own responsibility. You understand? But that needs to be changed. If we want better country, we want better society, we want to live a modern life, we need to upgrade ourselves and have a standard of living. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, so talking about so opportunity. We need to change some lot of stuff. Uh -huh. 
Yeah, we're talking about opportunity for us as a country and also for the government. We have a population that is huge outside of Liberia, a working population too. Uh, we see from the statistics that at some point, uh, Liberians outside of Liberia contribute around $500 million to, to Liberia, uh, depending on the year, sometimes $400 and $200 million. So this is a group of people that might be able to uh, make a mortgage payment, if not for themselves, for their family in Liberia. Don't you see that as an opportunity that our government can look at and say, you know what, we can reach a deal with a company that will pay housing and will be an incentive also for these citizens of ours in the outside world to be able to come to Liberia because when they come, they know they will have a comfortable place to, to stay. And don't you think the government can tap into that? That's a very good topic in there. That that's a, that, that may be sense, you know. That may be sense. But I'm not sure that we need to give the working people mm -hmm. opportunity to stay closer to the capital city where they be able to work and produce more money. And those that stay in the capital city are not working. They are not doing nothing. Because you pay ten dollars per month and you live in, in this capital city where you have no chance to pay transportation, nothing. And those that are working, they live all the way, dwell out, they live all the way, by park and just lot of far places. And they use all their transportation to come to the town and fight back and after hard work. They have to fight to go back. It's hard. So we need to upgrade the standard of living in Liberia. Those that want to live city life, they pay for city life. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank yeah, you that's, so that's, much. that's my suggestion. That's what I'm saying. But if, the topic is very interesting and it's very engaging. We have to modify the housing authority law and to see how best it can come to tax because we can talk all this talk, Liberia will never move anywhere. Liberia will never move anywhere. They said the only thing that's going to drive them like how the rain coming, they falling down, their home is burning because they're, like, they're not able to invest in the house that they're paying 10 out of four because they think that the house is not belong to them. So they're not going to put roof only need that stuff that paying ten dollars or push and repair something. They're, they're waiting for the landlord to do that. That is not right. Where you live, you should treat it well. Thank you. Thank you, you understand? Thank because you where so you live right now, yeah. in this country, where you leave your amount of market payment you pay, or if you have a home, you pay like thousand five hundred dollars to live a decent life, or thirteen hundred or fourteen hundred dollars, a single man like me. Every month, I have to come up with two thousand or three thousand dollars to live a little bit life that I can live as a single man. Thank See, you so much. But one person will ask you, say, I say, how how much for your rent? He say, oh, my rent is ten dollars, and I stay holding for twelve months. Are you serious? You are not a human being. If you cannot come up with ten dollars every say, single month to be able to pay your being. rent. Hey, hey, thank you. Don't say that. No, that condition. That condition. Take it easy. Take it easy. If you through that condition, yeah, I know you have all the lawyer. I just wanted to put it there so you can bet on that. Okay. If you're living as a decent man in the city or him up here as a life, you understand? Know if you cannot come up with $10, eh? $10 for the whole month, something wrong. It's not bad with the third for the condition because when we start be praying for the people, we all went through the condition. Are you telling me that somebody cannot pay ten dollars a month but can drink and uh, fifty dollars labor every single month? Calculate that and put it into your investment. All right, thank you for your contribution. Thank you. We'll see the labor tables, it's full. Thank you. All right, thank you. Let me give the other people a chance to talk, but just calculate and see the difference. If you say I did not come up with ten dollars, that man will hustle. We buy a beer on the table that will be wasting. You'll never believe that he's looking for sleeping, sleeping place. Can't do like that. <laughs> if you are the single man in the society of the Republic of Liberia, if you cannot come up with ten dollars, you are not human being. You are not a human being. Thank you. Jack. Thank you. Thank you for your contribution. There, the brother is making his point. Uh, let me read this comment. Private sector investment empowers. The citizenry, the role of government is to ensure an enabling environment for these investments. Incentives trigger the same. So the guy is saying the incentives will trigger the same. You know, that's some of the incentives you're talking about right there. You know, uh, if you can strike a deal with a company to build a housing, William will say, you know what, I'll take one. I may not be able to live there now, but my brother will be there so that when I visit, you know, uh, I will have a place to sleep. 
you know, uh, that's how we make it. Folks in server space, you are watching Focus on Liberia. This is our program, FOL Marketplace, a business and economic forum, where we also talk issue of development. And today we are looking at housing in Liberia, both government and private development, or how can the government and the private sector come together to invest into the housing, the housing sector, you know, to help improve the standard of living. You are looking at the pictures on Facebook. You are also seeing the videos. Our people are stranded. They are living in their homes. They live in the slums. Rainy season is around. They can't sleep in their homes. Those who don't have nowhere to go, they stay in the water throughout the night. How can we solve that problem? Willa is saying, housing is one option that you have. How you do it, that's what we're talking about. Willa, uh, we're we 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 go, we going an hour and 15 minutes already. I see that you, you're enjoying the conversation. Yeah. <laughs> well, we are, but you know, I know that we have another show. Please tell the viewers what's coming on next. Uh, and then, you know, we'll talk a little bit more about housing. But what's coming up next for we'll Focus on Idea, the next, uh, to, for today and uh, tomorrow? What we got? Oh, for today, later this evening at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, uh, we will be having a special uh, focus on Liberia special at 7 p.m. Eastern Time with a Liberian gentleman called Dr. Bala Kima. Uh, I think Kima Bala or Bala Kima, uh, he will be our guest. Uh, this brother has been, uh, you know, expressing how he sees things about uh, Liberia. He believes that uh, many of us Liberians in the diaspora, the U.S. to be specific, are not taking advantage of the opportunities that are here. And many of us, or uh, some of us, are on Facebook becoming uh, Facebook politicians, how beyond this little green screen. And that's all we do. We don't make that much contribution to our country. And uh, we talk down on others who are in government and trying to uh, make their contribution. Uh, so we'll be sitting with that brother today, you know, to get his perspective. You know, uh, let him explain further why he's seeing that we're not seeing, and 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 looking at the way he's looking at things. How then? Uh, what options? What what Liberian people will say? Uh, uh, suggestion, proffer suggestion. What kind of suggestions does he have to proffer? You know, as a way of we Liberian here not only helping ourselves to reach our full potentials, but also uh, contributing to Liberia uh, positively. I think well, then uh, that is it. Uh, I don't have anything left. I think we know the topic. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Anthony. And and I want to want to say thank you for keeping uh, this thing grounded to where the rubber hits the road. Mm -hmm. uh, and just putting it out there, uh, we have a challenge with housing. We have a challenge with the infrastructure that impacts us when the rain comes. Uh, these are all engineering uh, things that have been fixed in other countries. And uh, this is something that we can do as well in Mama Liberia. And, uh, and and so where do we go from here, how it works? We wanna encourage the folks who are entrepreneur minders, investor minded and so forth, to not give up. If you have some proposals or different things, uh, we encourage you to you know, seek Liberia and uh, see what can be done. Um, and lastly, uh, Anthony, it's just that um, the well, the asteroid... Before you close, uh, I don't mean to cut you off. We have a caller here. Let the let, let, squeeze that one. Let's uh, call. Caller with phone number 7486. Quickly to the issue. Where are you joining us from? Oh, well, thank you. My name is Momo. I come from Minnesota. Welcome, Momo. Oh, first, I want to say thanks to the both of you. Oh, my name is Sion Baran who were well, discussing the issue. Mm -hmm. uh, the issue about hawking of Liberia, like I tell someone, Liberia is like a virgin land. Mm -hmm. When I travel, I went to Nigeria. Mm -hmm. If you cross the, the bridge of Nigeria and go on the island, <clears throat> if you cannot afford, if you cannot afford like a 100,000 Naira a month for a rent, you cannot live on the island. If you cross the alley in Lagos, if you cross the bridge, just like when you cross that part of, when you go that part of Lagos, you just see that in different wall. Mm -hmm. But if you come the other side, you see people, you'll see that people are definitely suffering 
in Nigeria. So for sure, Nigeria, like I tell you, like where the Virgin Islands, the problem about our country more often you find our housing and even things are difficult for our country. In our country, almost everything is politics. For example, Simbra, if you got your money and you bought a land by home and you decide to build a room, a decent room maybe you want to rent it, people within that facility, the place you buy the land, they will start to bring quality around you. Some will can't tell you say the land you buy, you know, buy the land from the from the raffle or not. Only because maybe that person has someone in government. They will come in a little infringement or right, you run from court to court, from court to court. Or if maybe you are, for example, you are a representative or a minister, brother, you want to do such a thing. And longer people decide you try to do things like that, first, we're in the opposition, and longer they will say that minister money, they say that they are from your money. That's one of the problems that is suffering our country. So in the day in Liberia, you find out more people who prosper in Liberia are foreigners. Liberia is there, do not do not prosper more often because one of the problems we have, almost everything in Liberia is politics. You live up for your money, you go buy home, maybe you want to do something. So just only because maybe you don't support that person's idea, the, your end of the day, your effort to try to put it into, into the garbage. But when it's foreigner, just look at the thing, the, the thing we use in Nigeria. If you go in Nigeria, the thing in, in, in Lagos, you find a thing like for, for 10 hours US. But a Nigeria may buy a thing and carry the library set for 35 hours. So, in a day, the Nigeria may will look at a store and rent it for 150 hours. But your friend Liberian, Liberia may will not want to look at yeah, are 150 dollars you are in a rent store for you or maybe a parcel or land for you for that price. They will press in the library and want to cook you and take the land from you. That's one of the problems we're facing like you are. All right. Security is one of our problems. Thank you. That's, that's one of our problems. Like, there are people here that want to do things by home, but sometimes you can be afraid. You will slave up for your money, you go by home, only because you don't support someone's idea, the person Put a whole effort in the gather strength. In a day, you go from court to court, court, court from court. That's one of the parts that make people afraid. So, in a, the only way some of, some of those things will change in like Europe, until we Labron will change our mindset, we try to take, we Labron ask our brother and sister. But in like we prefer foreigners. Like I let you know people that say, oh, the government gave the country to foreigners. It's very simple because every business in Labron you go into, some will bring quality around, but when a food man or Nigeria may go into that business, the labor man will be able to show all the loophole to that to that food or, or Nigeria man. But you, your friend, like going, first thing they will start bringing, if a long time maybe you are part of party A or party B. That's, the, that's one of the problems we're taking right like here. All right, thank you, brother. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for your contribution. Thank you for your contribution. Uh, well, then we have to leave it there. We have a caller that's just joined up, but we have to leave it right there. Uh, caller, sorry that you came late. That is caller with phone number any in 6149. Well, then you're on mute. Oh, let him us finish and I will yield my time. I, I think we just gave my time. To the let him, yeah, yeah, because they said it. All right. Uh, let me bring on that caller. Caller. Uh, you have a good Samaritan here. I was ready to run. Uh, your name and what you got? Two minutes. Phone? Two minutes, brother. My name, my, my name is Isaac Constance. All right, Mr. Constance, quickly uh, to the issue. We're talking uh, housing uh, in Liberia. I live in Colorado, Denver, Colorado. All right, you've been following the show? Yes, but... Uh, it's very, yeah, topic today is very interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, it encourages me to, to want to take part, but I, I don't know how to be part of it. You know uh, how. Here, Mr. Comey is... Uh, doing it right now. 
Mr. Coney is a chairperson of, of that organization, but we we have not heard about it in in Denver, Colorado. So is it only center in wherever he is, or is all over United States? Well, Mr. Anthony, Mr. Coney will answer that question, but right now we're talking about housing. We're talking about housing. Do you have any contribution to make on the housing side? Or maybe you should call Mr. Coney. Uh, we, well, then we have to go here. Call us, sorry. We have to go. Uh, it seems that you did not follow the discussion, so you may not be in the best position to make a contribution. And so, uh, I mean, I will say I'm sorry. Uh, you know, maybe you should, you, should, you should watch the broadcast after we end it here. So you can know what we talk about, and then uh, next time you come, you'll be able to make a meaningful contribution. Uh, reach out to Mr. Cooning, and he will be able to share some information with you. On that note, folks, in cyberspace, this is how we will come to the end of our broadcast here at Focus on Liberia. Uh, there has been a broadcast brought to you by my partner, William Bernard King, and my name is Anthony Sier. And the program you just watched is FOL Marketplace, a business and economic forum here at Focus on Liberia. At this platform, we do three things. We educate, we elevate, and we promote all things Liberia. We hope we were, you know, an of an education to you. We hope also we were able to elevate the discussion, and we hope also we were able to promote the issues uh, that Liberians care about. Well, I see people still coming and people want to talk, but folks, you, 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 you <laughs> we'll, we'll today, continue then, next week. Uh, Just let them know. Well. So what next we're week. Gonna do next week, we will discuss the same topic. We can guarantee you that yeah. next week we'll discuss the same topic. It seems to be people are building interest. And so those of you who miss it today, we are letting you know next week, same topic, same time, 3 p.m. Eastern time, live here at Focus on Liberia on FOL Marketplace. We want to say thank you, folks, for always following our broadcast here. Yeah? For those who may say it's because you did not like our Facebook page, Focus on Liberia on Facebook. Just like that page. Anytime we go live, you will get our notification and you will not miss it. But anytime you miss it, go also on YouTube. Type in there Focus on Liberia. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. You will also be notified when we upload the show so that at your own time, and in that sweet little comfortable place of yours, you can watch this show and learn something that we may have to share with you. Willen King is happy and he's saying bye-bye. I am also saying bye-bye. We are leaving you with this song that says we are all Liberians. Listen to that song for five minutes. When you come next time, you will tell me thank you for playing this song for you. Bye-bye, folks. Thank you, Anthony. We are Liberians.